Oh, Tabletop Simulator VR. I'm a big fan of this incredibly weird sandbox. I got to try it out right before the 4th of July weekend with Lee Hutchinson over at Ars Technica, since he also happens to have a Vive kit at his place. Uh, wonderful uh, sandbox. It's very broken. It's clearly, even though it's been released and you can pay for it, it feels very beta. But the idea is this. You land in a virtual reality space where you can generate whatever tabletop game you want. It comes preloaded with sort of the standard old guard ones. Jigsaw puzzles, chess, parcheesi, checkers, uh, backgammon, dominoes. Uh, it also has a, an RPG kit, is what they call it, which is essentially... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons without the official license, where you can generate a Dungeons and Dragons table complete with monsters and walls. Uh, and then you and your, who, however many people join in in virtual reality, and it can get up to 10 people in a session, can shrink and grow yourselves as needed. And so you can essentially have one person be the dungeon master in virtual reality and puppeteer all the figurines and all this other stuff and limit what everyone else does. That's cool. Uh, and while I the people the who are... And other people can shrink down and be the little miniatures in the D&D &D game. <laughs> and, and they can be restricted to what they can and can't touch. So that's like, oh, you can only touch the dice. And there's this giant 10-sided die right above your head and you can grab it and throw it and that sort of thing. It also, it does not require virtual reality. You can actually play a limited version of this uh, with your mouse and keyboard. But because you're manipulating these sort of 3D objects, it, it does feel better in VR, especially because it doesn't, put rules. Like, here we are messing around with dominoes. There's no restriction. We're not required to play uh, the official way with chess or checkers or dominoes or whatever. It's sort of saying, here are all the pieces. You can mess around. There's even a table flip button. It's a dedicated table flip button <laughs> where at any point you just tap it and boom, all the pieces go flying and the table goes flying and then you have to regenerate to start over. Can, can uh, you undo that? <laughs> no. Nope, nope, no no undo. Uh, button, as far as I see. Flip you in can, anger. I suppose that's like real life. So, so. this is you basically, can, it's a physics sandbox that they happen to put a couple of board game icons in. They, it's a physics sandbox with a ton of board game stuff in it, and it does have rules. For example, the poker game has a really clever thing of it will hide your opponent's poker uh, piece, uh, cards. Excuse me. So if you're playing uh, Texas Hold'em, you can be at the table, and you can be a dork and throw chips around and make fun. But if you want to play seriously, it knows some of the basic stuff and has these rules that you can set. Even better, this is the thing I think is really cool, is how much content you can import into it. So the mm. game has its own store where you can buy. If you see right there, there's, there was a little window of different games on the right. Those were all for sale, including Zombicide, Tiny Epic Kingdoms, Cosmic Encounter. These are not uh, big popular uh, Mattel games or anything like that. You're not going to find them at your Target or Best Buy. But these are games that uh, super nerds really love. Um, and you can pay just a few bucks to get their official parts in your virtual set as if a way to try it out. So imagine if you have a board game group from college. They've gone all the way across the, the country and you want to try out a new board game. You can pay to download its assets. You can even upload your own board game ideas, your own prototypes, and mess around. Um, I have friends who work on board games and they've already said that they want to test this out just to be able to have that quicker access of, okay, let's prototype. What's it feel like to actually have these pieces? Do these yeah. cards make sense all laid out on a table that's set to scale? The possibilities for this sort of thing, I, 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 it's... It's super fun. It's super geeky. You can just be a dork like you can see here with this D&D uh, &D sort of set. At one point, Lee just grabbed one of these dragons and just went rawr and flew it around like a five-year-old. <laughs> with no shape. And I think, honestly, I have had less fun and paid more money for a video game. Just being able to do stupid stuff like that. It's, it's a very specific yet open sandbox. There I am now standing in the D&D &D world you can see on the screen. That is just I'm, so cool. I'm sorry. That's awesome. We, we've got a VR world right I, now. Uh, we have room in the back here. I, I, I want to be playing this right now. I know this yeah. looks really cool. Can, can you make your own games? Like you can like, make your own you games. You can just go in there and just, oh, that's awesome. It's got a ton it. of pre-built assets. So if you don't want to just if you don't want to render anything yourself, you can use what's in there, the colored pieces and the different shapes, and do something rudimentary. And then it's it takes a lot of different 3D files. So if you really are an aspiring graphic designer or a game designer in any way, it's not hard to import stuff and mess around. So if you happen to have a Vive. I put that right at the top of the list of things for your own enjoyment, let alone the one that you show off when other people show up. That'll be the game that people will walk over and like, I want to try out your virtual reality. And it's like, hold on, I'm, I'm almost done dorking out in fake checkers. Yeah. So, you know, and, I'm, I'm doing and that you'll want to convince all of your friends to also get VR and then get it because then you could all have, you know... <laughs> I, I want, I want to sessions. see how long it takes for there to be four people in the same room all wearing vibes yeah, right. playing a board game in a virtual world. <laughs> That, oh. No, board games will always be best, but if you've got friends across the country, this is 
yeah. very sad. Surprisingly good. Well, I could see this technology making uh, real-time strategy games much more interesting mm -hmm. because you could have one player on each side who's the general, and then everyone else actually is in the board game. Yeah. They are the pieces that the general is moving around, and that's that adds a whole new uh, dimension to the gameplay. I'd love that. Yeah, I do too.